look who is back wearing his talking baseball sweet lid in front of his nude painting, sipping his half calf decaf mocha latte with a twist. That would be Trevor Ploof is back with us. See, Rose, I missed that beautiful face, man. I texted you last night how much I missed it. And that's very sweet. That's it's very well sweet. worth the wait, baby. All right, we got a lot to get into baseball wise, but first, give us the twenty second primer on your Cabo trip. Go. It was awesome. Private jets, beaches, Nobu, um, sun, sand, I had this beautiful tan. I was living the dream for forty eight hours. Like, let me have that a little bit, Chris. Yeah, no, I do want to say, to. I do want to say, I really appreciate you filling in for me on talking baseball, Absolutely. finding some people to fill in for me here. We needed that trip, and you made it happen for me, man. So thank no, you. no, 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 stop. It was funny because originally you were like, uh, emergency trip to Cabo. I need help filling in on uh, Monday, Tuesday. I said, no problem. We can do that whenever you need to. Life gets in the way. I want you and Olivia to enjoy your time together. You guys deserve it. You got young kids. I remember it well. And then, you know, you FaceTime me over the weekend. You're like, dude, I need you to fill in on Talking Baseball Tuesday. I'm like, no problem. I I'm a loser. I don't do anything. <laughs> I am here for you. Okay? So there you go. Thank you. I love you, man. You you're not a loser, by the way. Uh, yeah, check out the chat. Don't make me start yeah. listing all your accomplishments and what you got going for you, okay? You're very sweet. You're very sweet. Let's get to it. Uh, T-minus about, um, what is it, like 50-ish hours on the trade deadline plus, right around there, give or take. Max Scherzer, that news is heating up. Some reports say he would welcome a trade to one of the top NL West contenders, either the Giants, Dodgers, or Padres. Do you think he's moving? And if so, which team needs him the most? I think he is moving 100%. And, of course, he fits on any team because he's a future Hall of Famer who is still really freaking good. But I think the Padres need him more than the other two teams. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Giants' starting rotation has been a strong point. Like, I know they've expressed interest in adding starting pitching. That's just because they're smart and they know, like, you need as many pitchers as possible. Right. The Dodgers have had some issues with their depth. People, you know, they've had uh, Dustin May gone. Uh, what's his what's his name? Kershaw is on the IL, and then obviously the whole Bauer fiasco. Uh, so they're they're hurting. But I think the Padres could use him the most. You know, behind you, Darvish. They have Musgrove, who's been really good. Um, Snell's been okay. You know, Weathers has been okay. I I, I think Scherzer kind of fits that team like personality wise too like they're like uh -huh. super fiery and like i just couldn't imagine a team with him on it that is already as like good and as energetic as they are i think it would be awesome to watch they know like they don't want to be in that wild card game no i don't think i mean none no. of the teams want to be in that wild card game no. so whoever pulls that trigger and gets max serger i think probably immediately becomes the front runner in the division yeah, and let's remember, they're still – I mean, they're five and a half back of the Giants. It's not like it's two games back. They're they're two and a half back of the Dodgers for the top wild card season. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you want to stay out of that wild card. By the way, let's keep in mind, because I tend to agree with you, I think the Padres need, it, need him the most. Darvish has not pitched well this month, hasn't been healthy. Blake Snell has been really good at Petco and hit and miss on the road at best. Yeah. You know, do you feel comfortable with Joe Musgrove as your wild card starter? Okay. I mean, he's a good, he's a really good pitcher, but if he has to line up against the Walker Bueller, you would give the edge and that's nothing against Musgrove. Walker Bueller is one of the great modern era playoff pitchers. Just go yeah. look at his numbers. So I think they need him the, the most. And let's remember, they have not won a world series. They haven't been to a world series in over two decades. Okay. Uh, they also have a bunch of prospects that they haven't given up in these deals for Clevenger and Darvish and Snell. You're right and Adam Frazier. And so they still have some bullets to fire. I, and I also think they have the most interesting GM out of the entire, out of baseball. That's a good word for him. That's a good word for him. Interesting. Right. He's done some things great. <laughs> He's done some shitty things in my opinion, but he is aggressive. And I like that about him. Yeah. I think, I think they can go get the job done. Like you said, their farm system um, has the pieces to get it done. I, I just like imagining Max Scherzer on the bump down at Petco. That yeah, crowd, fun. the way they've been all season long, like firing him up, him firing the crowd up. 
It's like a, it's like a dang, uh, what's that called? Pinball machine, man. Oh. Energy back and forth, back and forth. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Here's my dark horse real quickly. The Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, I love that too. I love that too, Chris. I just, I think they're worried about glass now getting back. I don't know anything, by the way. I'm just going to admit, I, I don't know anything. The next time I talk to Tyler, I'll ask him how he's feeling. But I think that, that they feel like they could make a move. And I read a really interesting column from Ken Rosenthal in The Athletic about all the deferred money that Scherzer is owed. It, it won't even be paid until 2028. It's a so, weird con- – I think he hasn't made any money the last two years. It, it starts next year, 15 a year for six years. He it's gets crazy. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy. weird – So a lot of the thing. decision makers that are pulling the trigger on these trades in 2021 might not even be with their teams. Sure. Or Scherzer is owed. I read the uh, same article. Uh, they're saying Tampa – might not be in Tampa. So. Right? We got that problem. You never know. Okay, let's move on to a trade that did happen. And I think it opened a lot of eyes because Kendall Graveman was shipped from Seattle across the clubhouse because they were playing the Houston Astros yesterday in a four-player trade. A lot of people reportedly up in arms. Um, quotes, uh, players felt betrayed. Many of them found out on social media. Here's what one unnamed player said about GM Jerry Depoto. He hasn't come down here to the clubhouse. He sits in his suite playing fantasy baseball, rips apart our team without telling us anything. In your opinion, did Jerry Depoto owe the clubhouse an explanation after this Kendall Graveman trade? Yeah, of course, but they're not going to get one. Like, that's just not the way it goes. For better or for worse, I think it's bullshit. I think he should have had to go into the club and explain to them, you know, why. Even though, if you've been following – the Mariners at all this year, you understand like they already had a plan for this year. The players played too good. Now DePoto, he's having to change his plan a little bit to appease them. Like Kendall Graven was never going to be there throughout the year, especially with how good he was doing. They don't believe their window is this year. They're sitting one game back in the wild card and DePoto sticking, you know, to his plan saying our window's not here yet. Even though he's he's saying he got Tyler Anderson, he's saying I'm trying to add while I subtract. That's B freaking S, Chris. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Okay, you don't give up a rel- uh, You know how valuable a shutdown reliever is in the playoffs. Which, by the way, they're at, uh, they're like I said, one game out. Like you don't get rid of someone if you believe in your team. You don't get rid of a Kendall Graven if you believe in your team. So it's all. It's not going to change, and that's just the way it is. These GMs don't offer explanations, especially they don't go down in the clubhouse and go to the team. They might talk to a reporter. And yeah, say by the way, stuff. can I ask – I want to stop you there. How often did you see your GM when you were on a team? It depends in where the, you are. In the clubhouse I'm talking about, not on the field. In the clubhouse. Um, it's, not, it's not much. You right. know, like guys like Billy Bean are a little more, you know, boisterous when they come around. The guys in Tampa – or you know what they would talk to you they would come into the clubhouses i felt very comfortable talking to them about anything Mm -hmm. in minnesota with terry ryan he wasn't down there a lot but like he would come down and and if you wanted to have a conversation you could go talk to him but they're not just sitting around the clubhouse offering explanations for moves i mean i i don't think it could work that way either because there'd probably be some fights and some angry people in the clubhouse but they're not going to get an explanation or at least a good one and like I said, if you've been following, you know, even preseason, you know, with what they were doing, the Mariners knew this wasn't their window and they, never, they were never going to operate like it was. Unless they freaking do something to completely surprise me, Chris, which they're not going to, we, we should have seen this coming. Okay, but teams do go off script. Nobody predicted the San Francisco Giants to have the best record in the National League, but they do four months into the season. So th- you might have we, a plan. Yeah, we didn't. Maybe they were like, I guarantee we could win this year. I guarantee a Farhan wasn't like, dude, we're going to be – not only are we going to have – we're going to be better than the Dodgers, we're going to be better than the Padres, we're going to have the best record in the National League. I guarantee you when he wrote down goals for the 2021 season, it might have been a thought, but there's no way he wrote it down in ink. Maybe number two pencil. Um, I know – yeah, I know. You, you, you've, you've said that from the beginning as well. Right. A couple things. You made a great point about Tampa. Tyler Glass now has made this point about uh, Eric Neander, their GM down there. He says – There is no feeling of a hierarchy in our organization. Everybody feels just as important. He's very approachable. I know I'm going to get traded at some point. That's why there's no ill will. Like, the communication is very good here. It sounds like it's never been that way up in Seattle. And actually, it would have been off-brand for DePoto to have called a meeting, gone into the clubhouse, and say, 
hey, guys, here's why I traded Kendall Graveman. Let's be honest here. A GM's job is to replace the guys in that clubhouse with better and or cheaper players. Players don't like GMs for the most part. I didn't like it when my boss told me I wasn't coming back to MLB Network because it was a financial thing. He didn't tell the rest of the IT team. He didn't hold a team meeting, and he was like, hey, listen, this is why Chris isn't returning. I'm not comparing myself to Kendall Graveman, but I'm just telling you. It's a similar situation. You just so, – you don't talk about the future when you're one game out of a playoff spot. Okay. You just can't talk about the future. That's what he's doing wrong. Like, and unless you just, you better come out and fully say it, man. Like, say what's on your mind, Depoto. Come out and say, look, we're not going to win this year. I'm, I'm, you I'm getting this team set up for three or four years. I know you can't do that, but like, that's better than saying we're going to, this is just one trade in a series of trades that they're going to like. And then you trade your best reliever, one of the best relievers in the game right now. Mm -hmm. And you go pick up a starter with the four or five Tyler Anderson, nice guy. He's had, he's probably better than his numbers indicate, but they need Kendall more than that. Well, that was, that was my next question was, does, you know, Tyler Anderson, we thought he was going to go to the Phillies in the middle of the afternoon. They end up nixing that trade because of a medical issue with one of the prospects that was going back to Pittsburgh. And then, Hours later, Pittsburgh trades him to Seattle. Now, keep in mind, he's made 18 starts. He's gone at least five innings in all 18, which is very good. Don't underestimate that. That mm -hmm. helps improve your bullpen because if I don't have to go into it earlier, then it means I can use more valuable guys later. I don't have to get that extra inning out of a 50-50 guy. You don't think this is a – do you think – don't you think this is the start of something? That's what DePoto is saying. He said, in a vacuum, the Kendall Graveman trade does not look right, but – Wait, be patient with me. You don't. You're not buying it. It, it could. I mean, you're saying a star saying as far as trades coming. Yes, maybe over the next 48 hours. He, he he better bring it because you just traded away a reliever making 1.25 million dollars this year. I know, and That's he's given you a point eight with a point six nine whip. I know. But more than a strikeout per inning. Like, I, why I, don't you go try to sign that guy? Why don't you go give him? Two years, ten million. I'm Get with for you on all of this. Is there the possibility, though, that by Friday, when the trade deadline is done, that we're going to have this show and look at each other and say, "Boy, Jerry Depoto actually pulled off some sweet deals." And I don't understand how the Kendall Graveman thing. If he was making eight million dollars this year and still had three and change on the books, and that would help him maneuver around and get somebody else financially, he, as you said, he's he's owed like. 500 grand the rest of the year they can find that in their couch cushions in the office so you're right it doesn't make sense but is there any possibility that you see that we're going to say jerry depota was right in 48 hours i i don't like i don't either will, will there be more moves made probably yeah is it going to be enough we're like oh i get it now jerry no he's setting the team up for next year the year after and like i wish he would just come and say that unless he goes and gets jose ramirez and one of the indians relievers i'm serious though like that's one of the places where ramirez really fits if they do that and they get a reliever then i'll be like you the dog but i don't think i'm going to be saying that i i will I will admit that I'm wrong if they go out and get J-Ram, okay? Right. I'll wear a Jerry DePoto shirt here the day after they go mm -hmm. get J-Ram. How about that? All right, good. And you know what? <clears throat> Why don't you wear a Mariners one? I'll tell you how you can do it. Because today's Instagram Live is presented to you by our friends at foco.com slash John Boy. They've got all the great baseball gear you need to get decked out for the final two months plus a playoff push. They've got whatever shirts, your favorite team, they can have those. They've got the cool, I love these hats. I'm a big fan of these. <laughs> so if you're a Mariners fan, go out and do a little sad shopping today. We're going to give you 15% off your first order when you use the code word JOHNBOY15. Once again, it's foco.com slash JOHNBOY. Code word is JOHNBOY15. Go get yourself a straw hat. You've seen the cool shirts on us. You've seen the T-shirts. They've got slides. They've got everything you need. Okay? Foco.com slash JOHNBOY15. Now I'm back. Let's get back to the trade market. Chris Bryant was asked last night about how he's doing emotionally because his name has been bandied about in trade talk for weeks. He admitted that some of the stuff is exhausting. This is a quote. It really is. I'm just trying to do my best to keep my focus where it needs to be and help whoever I can along the way here and just take everything in stride. And whatever happens is out of my control. 
Will he be traded? And if so, who needs to come call him? Yes, and everybody. I mean, this is – No, no, no. I know you're going to make me do one team. I know you're going to – but he fits everywhere, dude. I know he does. Pick one. Brew Crew. Oh, my God. I saw I saw something that they're saying the Giants are also looking into him. Like, it's just so many this, 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 this going right. around. I, yeah. I want to see the Brewers make this type of move. That's why I'm saying it. Do you know what they would have to give up to their division rivals? I don't think that matters you... anymore. I don't think the division rival thing matters. Oh, I think anymore. there's a premium. I think you there's think still so? a premium. You think, the, you, you think the Brewers would have to pay more than yeah. – the Giants for a rental? I do. I, I, st I still do. I still do. Yes. I don't believe in that, but okay. I mean, where are you? Where do you I mean, he fits everywhere, so give me your team. The Giants. You were saying the Giants because of the report this morning? No, I said the Giants because I said the Giants a week ago. I really want to see them make a move. Scherzer makes sense because – why wouldn't you want Max Scherzer? Chris Bryant makes too much sense. And I know that they've gotten some remarkable play in the outfield. I get it. Duggar has been fantastic. We've seen what Wade has done. Yaz is Yaz. Man, think about it, though. Chris Bryant on that team, and then all of a sudden, maybe one other bullpen move. The, the Giants – I don't understand the Giants. So, like, I, I obviously, like, he, he's, he's a good fit there. He's probably going to end up on the Mets, if I had to guess. Do you like, think I he want, fits best I there? want the Brewers, but, like, like logically thinking, he's probably going to end up on the Mets. Do you think he fits best on the Mets? Again, he fits everywhere, Chris. I can't give you the best. I can't do it. He fits everywhere. But, yeah, he fits great on that team. Okay. And, look, they – I think – I think that they are sitting back waiting and they will strike. Okay. Yeah, I think I think he would fit in nicely over there at third base. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a J.D. Davis fan. I like him. I love his stick. His glove over there is a, worries me a little bit. But I, Bryant, Bryant and the polar bear at the corners. <laughs> Lindor comes back in about four weeks. Could be interesting if they get to Grom. But if they don't, man, that's the thing that worries me. Like you trade for Chris Bryant for a couple months and you don't have Jacob DeGrom. That could scare the hell out of me. I could change everything if they're they're talking about that. Like, who are we going to have? But then maybe it makes more sense to have to go out and get Bryant. Maybe. Brew crew, go make it happen. Stevie Cohen's probably going to do it. Somebody do it. I cannot watch Chris Bryant on the north side of Chicago last week. He's month gone. They can't, keep, they can't keep him. No, they can't. And don't do it. It'd be terrible. Uh, speaking of the north side of Chicago, Reds get a big win last night, although Javi Baez was not in the starting line of bad heel. That was kind of interesting. Uh, but I do want to talk about Joey Votto, who continues to swing it. Another multi-homer game for him last night. Power surge since the All-Star break. So what is most impressive about last night's performance by Votto? Uh, that he's homered now in four straight games. That he made that awesome defensive play. His, you know, charging into the tarp, turns around nails the guy at the dish or when he called the little kid down in the Reds uni and gave him the ball through the net. I know which one you're going to say. So I'm going to, I think that that double play is probably the most impressive thing. Okay. He loved it. I love, I love that because it shows awareness of your surroundings, having to go over the tarp and then understanding the situation before the play. If I have to go back and make this play over my shoulder, there's a guy on third base who could be tagging and I have to make that throw. It takes multiple layers to make that play happen, and he pulled it all off. So I, I enjoyed watching that. I, now you go. What do you think I'm going to say? You're going to say the kid, and I, and I actually believe that too, but I wanted to have, let you have your shine, man. I do too, but I, I love that. But I've seen him do this. Like I think now I expect it. He's, it's so wonderful, and every time he does it, it brings a smile on my face, all that sort of stuff. With that being said, I didn't know if Joey Votto still had the pop in his bat. He, at 37 years old, he is the oldest player in the National League to homer in four straight games since Barry Bonds in 2005. Wow. So, go Joey, go. He's almost yeah. 38, too. Yeah. So, if they're going to make a push, 
I wish they'd made a trade for some bullpen help a few weeks ago. Listen to me, GMs. I'm available for consultation. <laughs> Seriously, I would be the most aggressive motherfucker out there. Did we just say screw the kids right now? No, we didn't say screw the kids. At I all. thought I you were going to go kids. I would have went the kid. You could have. You don't, don't ever wait for me. Let's talk about the kid a little bit then, because that is what it's all about. That, that little boy I who came it. down is going gonna, is gonna to remember that for so long. And it's so easy for a ball player to do stuff like that. Yeah, it so, is. So, you know, everybody, all the ball players watch this show. Ball players, you're watching the show, go do something like that for a kid. I used to take uh, sunflower seeds and gum before the game. Mm-hmm. And we have so much on the bench. Just toss it up to the people in the stands. Like, they love stuff like that, you know? Give them a bag of seeds. They eat the seeds all day saying, oh, like, so-and-so gave me the seeds. Like, ball players, go do fun stuff like that. You'll make fans for life. Uh, another example of that, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Eli Jimenez, who came back and hit a 460-foot bomb last night to give the White Sox the lead. His first homer of the year. Of course, he's missed the entire season until this week. And apparently, he promised – a 12-year-old boy named Braden who has been battling pediatric cancer. He's like, I'm going to hit one for you. And he talked about it in a Zoom, ends up doing it. They showed it to the kid, and the kid's smile afterward just lit up the room. And no. that is – we can be in the heat of a pennant race. I could be MF and GMs from here to eternity for not making moves. We could be upset with this, that, the other thing. Take a deep breath. Go watch that video. You're going to feel better, a, lo- a little bit better about life. And certainly, Eloy, I, I give you a standing ovation, even though I'm sitting right now. I loved it. I loved it. I just saw something, though. What's that? Josh Donaldson not in the Twins lineup today. Day game after a night game? Trade deadline approaching. Brew crew, go make that happen. I just mm-hmm. need the brew crew to go make a move, man. Yelly's on the COVID list. Like, let's go. Go make a move. Uh, by the way, somebody put in our chat, most of the players are full of themselves. I'm going to um, – I wouldn't – I normally would not say something. Don't be an asshole. Stop. What, most players you know, are full of themselves? It's not true. Oh, I, I would say the overwhelming majority of players are not full of themselves. There are a few assholes out totally. there. By the way, there's asshole broadcasters, there's asshole lawyers, there's <laughs> asshole janitors, there's asshole fast food servers, there's assholes in every line of work. And I will tell you this, having covered the sport for 30 years now, players are more in touch with fans, uh, what, what role they play, than ever before. 100%. The group that was there in the mid-90s, were, they were tough. They were tough to deal with. They didn't like you. They didn't give a shit. Some didn't give a shit about the fans. I'm not going to say they isn't. That's not fair of me. But, man, we have made so much progress. So don't ever say that again. Don't. Um, speaking of that, I will be at the Angel game tomorrow. So if you, anybody is going to be there, Nate, in the chat, I know you might be there. I'll be at that game. Um, come check me out if you see me. Uh I'm looking in the chat here. It says somebody somebody said that Michael Givens just got traded to the Reds. Is that well, real? Is that official? Is that a passing? Is that official? I don't know how he's doing. I, I got to be honest with you. I haven't watched much Rockies bullpen. I'm looking. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. Reds, Rockies finalizing Michael Givens trade. So the Reds are still trying to do it. I don't know Gibbons. how Givens is. I don't know how Givens look- is pitched this year. I'll look it up right now. Chris, I got, I'm ready for this. That's good. He's, I got a 2-7, 31 games, 29 innings pitch, 34 Ks, his whips at a 1-3. Okay. Uh, he's hey, a hey, good bullpen arm. Yeah, going to be an improvement. I still think – I don't know. I just – I wish these teams had made moves earlier. I just wish it. I, so I say it incessantly. Games on June 27th count just as much in the standings as the one on September 27th. Don't think that that game you lost there, that they don't count more later in the season. Mathematically, they're the same. Go fix your team earlier. The Brewers did it when they traded for Willie Adamas, and it's made a difference. Stop sitting on your hands. 
The Reds got to catch the Dodgers or the Padres, right, essentially? Yeah, I don't know if they have enough meetings with the Brewers to, to scare them. What are they, seven back? Yeah. Um, oh, I have to tell people about my hat. Second straight day, I'm wearing the Columbia Fireflies. This is their alternate pride hat. I think it's really cool. Um, we'll pop the website in there for you to find out more about it. They're the single A, I think the low A affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. So go check them out. Uh, keep tagging your minor league teams that you want them to send hats so I can give them some love. It's made a big difference. We hear people, you know, saying, oh, I just bought this, that, the other one. People love the Mac Daddy's hat from the other day. I don't think you were here for the Mac Daddy's hat, were you? Oh, nice. Yeah. From the Kalamazoo Grizzlies, like their alternate Mac Daddy hat, which was pretty cool. I almost ate it for lunch. I was so hungry the other day. Oh, there you are. All right, dude. Well, this was a good hang today. A little, little longer. I love it. it. I can, I'll, I'll go for another hour if you want to. I'm with you. What do you have on John Boy Media? Well, your guys' episode, uh, Jimmy and Chris take over talking baseball while yeah. the two other idiots were on vacation. That come that came out today. You guys are talking all things trade deadline, I believe, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, we got we got a little bit caught. It's what happens when you trade, you know, do trade shows, uh, you know, on tape. But we had to um, because of some other things happening at the network. So we didn't get to the Kendall Graveman trade unfortunately, but we got to a lot of other stuff that still is out there and available for your consumption. Love that. Love that. So that came out. And then look, man, I don't have anything till talking baseball comes out on Friday. Obviously I'll be back here tomorrow morning with you. Well, that's yep. it, man. What about you? Who, who you got coming on the Rose rotation? So tomorrow uh, the Giolito episode is going to drop. It's just the two of us. We haven't caught up by ourselves in a while, uh, getting him all set for his field of dreams uh, trip. And he also tells – I'll save the story for tomorrow. But, yes, talking baseball is out with Jimmy. That was a lot of fun. We didn't poke too much fun at you guys for taking vacations, smack dab in the middle of trade deadline week. But, you know, really, it wasn't you that caught it. It was Jake who oh. really got hammered. <laughs> yeah. Look, man, some, life happens sometimes. I know. I'm not – dude, you took two quick days. You're in and out. Jake's gone, like, most of the week – lobster hunting or something it's just right i don't know it's more on brand for me to take a vacation out of nowhere like jake needs to be in that office working hard right that's true that's really true all right man it was great to have you back look at that smiling face one more time with the artwork there you go great you're gonna sell so many of those things you gotta get it you gotta get I know. it kind of brandon boy hook me up man Awesome. All right, dude, I'll see you uh, bright and early tomorrow morning at 1130 Eastern, 830 Pacific. See you tomorrow. See you guys. Peace. Enjoy your baseball and the trades.